Is an expensive high-tech fertilizer sower worth it for a medium-sized dairy farmer? Well, by the end of this video, we are all gonna have an answer. And I mean a proper answer. I have put hours of work into trying to calculate the benefit of this technology versus a simple fertilizer sower like I've owned for years. Before we get started, let's have a recap of how I have used this demo fertilizer sower or spreader, if you're English, over the last six months. front and back combo is so good. For me making this video, it's really important that what I say is credible and that all of you trust me in what I'm telling you. So I have been putting off making this video for weeks and months until I can tell you all I have bought this. And since I've already made the decision, I've already purchased this, that gives me the freedom to say what I want and I have nothing to gain or lose by giving you the facts. And I think that trust really matters because when I was first offered this as a demo, I said no, simply because I didn't believe it would save me any significant money over the fertilizer sower I have used for years. But the company who facilitated the demo persisted and they said I would save 5,000 pounds a year by using the technology on the new one versus the old one. They also agreed to let me put it on the front of the tractor and sorted all of that out for me as well, which was kind of the reason I agreed to do it in the first place. I tell you that so you know I was skeptical. I tell you I've bought it, so hopefully you can trust what I'm telling you. And now I'm gonna tell you how much I think this has benefited me over the last six or seven months. Okay, I'll stop procrastinating. Let's get into the results. And again, I just want to point out, these figures are not off the top of my head. I have put so much time and effort over the last six months to keeping track of everything, just to make this video at the end. Let's get started with one of the benefits which no one could disagree with. Using section control versus a non-section control fertilizer spreader. So I spread my fertilizer at 24 meters, and one of the biggest issues with spreading at that kind of width is that you're going to get overlaps when you don't want to, when you're finishing off a field. And the technology on this spreader allows me to shut off sections as I go so that I'm only applying to the fertilizer to the bit that needs it. Now you may think, well, at least if you overlap fertilizer, you're gonna get the extra grass anyway, but that's not how it works for nitrogen. This is a nitrogen response curve, and as you can see, there is an optimal level. And if you go past that optimal level, you can actually decrease grass yield. And you certainly don't get extra grass yield for applying nitrogen above the optimum. So if we do a 100% overlap on nitrogen, that fertilizer is totally wasted. If you overlap P and K, it's not wasted, it's gonna stay in your soil. And if you overlap sulfur, it's gonna be wasted because just like nitrogen, it's highly mobile. So for the last seven months, I have recorded every single track when I have been spreading my fertilizer and I've used some computer code to make these maps. What these maps do is they calculate the areas where I've been overlapping my fertilizer application and they give me a percentage overlap. I find an overlap of between five and a half and eight percent and if you google the research they say five to fifteen percent. So I'm in the ballpark and I would say that I'm actually spot on because research tends to exaggerate figures sometimes. If you want more detail on how I've done this calculation, go and watch my video on TikTok, but essentially I'm settling on a 5% fertilizer saving from section control versus not having section control. And that is factoring in me trying to do a really good job shutting off half of my fertilizer sore on the old one. It's not like I was doing a bad job to start with, hence why 5% is the low end of what the research says. Now I also need to factor in that I didn't sow all of my fertilizer through this fertilizer sower because a lot of the times this was on the front. So we're gonna divide my saving by two thirds 
and it gives us a saving over the last seven months on fertilizer of £2,000 per year. The next factual, provable, I'm 100% certain saving is the saving on using straight fertilizers versus using a compound. So what does that mean? Well, for example, my first cut, I applied urea and polysulfate rather than buying a compound fertilizer to apply that combination of nutrients. This is the entire reason why I really wanted to mount this to the front of my tractor because I knew the savings would be really significant. And the figures I've calculated prove that. The figure I calculated for using straights and urea versus buying a compound over the last seven months is 4,400 pounds. Now I will admit this has been the perfect year to maximize savings on buying urea and straights. The way the weather worked out meant that a second application often wouldn't have been possible. The time efficiency of using both is also factored into this, but that's the figure I've come up with and I am 95% confident that I have at least saved that much money from using the twin fertilizer sores with one on the front and one on the back. If there's a lot of controversy around how I've calculated this, I'll go into more detail. You can pause the video if you want to read through my spreadsheet. I've tried to make it as clear as possible, but that's the figure. They're my two most confident figures that I could stand behind all day. Essentially, in my opinion, they have zero assumptions. The rest of these figures, potentially do have some assumptions. And if you want to discard them and say that they don't count, that's okay. You don't have to take them into consideration. But for me, having used this for the last six or seven months, there is a viable, genuine saving to be had from the other two parts of technology I want to talk about. The first one I want to talk about is the fact that this fertilizer spreader has whey cells. Now, I like to think that I was pretty good in the past at making sure that I knew how much fertilizer was coming out whenever I set my fertilizer sower to a certain setting. When Farmhand came out to check if this fertilizer sower was calibrated properly, they found essentially zero issues. They were genuinely surprised by that. So I was doing a good job before I got the technology on a fertilizer spreader to make sure I was doing a good job. However, I have still found a big benefit to having whey cells actually on the sower. Sorry, spreader. If you really want to call it a spreader, call it a spreader. Over the last seven months, I went and sowed fertilizer as like an event 32 times. So that means 32 times I had to make sure the fertilizer spreader was empty whenever I was finished the last field. And in the past, I always would have had a little bit extra left and I usually would have went and put that on a grazing paddock, something like that, just to make sure I'm not totally wasting it. However, if it's nitrogen, you kind of are totally wasting it because if you don't completely finish a field, you come back the next time because it needs applied with fertilizer and you just do the whole field again anyway. Well, at least I did. Now, there was never a lot of fertilizer left when I was doing this the old fashioned way, just by being decent at setting up my fertilizer store. But I would say on average, it was probably around 100 kilograms. Now, because these are subjective calculations and I have no figures that I can write down on paper to back this up, I'm being extremely conservative. And I'm just gonna slice that figure in half and say that I'm only saving 50 kilograms each time. Well, that still adds up to 800 pounds per year. There is also another small subjective saving from having the whey cells because you can adjust your application rate up or down before you end up being out of fertilizer. So Sometimes you'll have too much fertilizer and you have to get rid of it. Other times you'll have too little fertilizer and you have to come back and finish the field. All of that really subjective stuff, I'm going to stick another £400 of saving on to give us £1,200 per year benefit from having the whey cell technology. I know this is subjective at this point, but it is a genuine benefit. I have seen it and experienced it, so I have to try to put a value on it. We have one more subjective figure to assign to this new fertilizer spreader. And then we're done. And that is the ability of this fertilizer spreader to adjust its output based on your forward speed. Again, this is a very hard thing to track. How much fertilizer am I really saving? But there definitely is a saving, so I do have to put a value on it. The times when this technology is most useful is when you're coming up to your headlands and you want to slow down a wee bit before you turn so you don't dig up so much soil 
or whenever you're going up or down a hill and your tractor will speed up or slow down naturally. The speed difference is only small. Maybe I'm doing 13 and a half kilometers an hour versus 14 kilometers an hour. And because it's only a slight increase or decrease on your target application rate, the fertilizer is still useful. It's not like when you overlap it when it is totally wasted. However, by getting your application exactly where you want it, I do think you will get extra grass, which I need to factor into this calculation. These are very subjective. I deliberately done them in order of what I'm confident with to what I'm not very confident with, but I'm gonna go very conservative and say that over the course of this year, I have perhaps gained 800 pounds on the variable speed technology. And I would say that the vast majority of that 800 pounds is actually not from applying fertilizer less or more, but just making sure that I maximize grass growth by a nice even layer of fertilizer across the entire field. There we have it, that is all the figures. Let's total this up. I've been very nervous about doing this video in case it wasn't obvious. <laughs> I swear it would have been easier to do if the saving was less. But this is my genuine answer. In 2024, I think having this fertilizer sower has benefited me 8,400 pounds. Believe me, I know that's a lot of money. And I do not take it lightly to make a claim like that. But let me just remind you, I've bought this. I genuinely gain nothing from saying 8,400 pounds a year or 1,000 pounds a year. And when I was first offered this, I never in a million years expected to benefit 5,000 pounds, which is what Farmhand told me to expect. And I will also say that perhaps this was just a really good year to utilize what this does because of how bad the weather has been how desperate I've been to maximize grass yield and how much of a financial impact that maximizing grass yield is actually gonna have on my business. But in farming, something always comes up. So if it wasn't the fact that we had such bad weather this year, which bumped up the figures of benefit on this, it might be that next year, the fertilizer price is significantly higher than it was this year. And of that 8,400, there is 4,400 pounds of that which is not actually really attributed to the fertilizer spreader, but attributed to how I was using it by mounting it on the front of the 8S and applying straights versus buying compounds. But for me on this farm, it was a genuine benefit. There is a few other points I'll mention. I haven't put figures on these. They're just things I've noticed. Number one, border spreading on this is much better than my old spreader. There is a really clear straight line down the field where you have your border limiter set to. The spreading accuracy of this spreader is easier to maintain and keep up with. I don't actually think it's much better than my old spreader, but it just takes less work to get it accurate. The bigger hopper was also a really nice addition this year. It just meant I spent less time going back and forth to the farm, less time spreading fertilizer. A lot of the new fertilizer spreader is set up in the control box and the cab. And that has made my life quite a bit easier because you can make changes on the fly. So definitely ease of use, ease of setup is a big plus. And the final benefit I want to mention, but it only really applies to me because I've mounted this on the front of the ADS, is it has been a big benefit for weight balance. In wet conditions or for hilly fields, I could never fill my back sore because it just put too much weight on the rear of the tractor. And if I wanted to fill it, I had to fit a one ton weight block to the front of the tractor. But because I've been using a front and back spreader and putting half a ton in the front and maybe a ton and a half in the back, I do think my tractor is better balanced. I get better traction and I actually think I'm doing less damage to the field because of that. But since no one else I've seen on a grassland farm has a front mounted fertilizer spreader, that benefit is just for me. There are definitely negatives to this fertilizer spreader as well. The biggest one by far is the cost. But these things are available on capital grants across the UK and Ireland, and that definitely does take a sting out of the cost of buying one of these things. Another negative, which is just really associated to me because I wanted the hydraulic version, it does require Power Beyond and Isobus to work. And the final thing I'll mention, whenever you're running two fertilizer sewers, you've twice as much setup to do, and you've twice as much washing to do. 
So there you go. That's my thoughts on my fertilizer store. I'm officially now banning myself from taking a demo of any machine because I got a demo of the ADS and I bought it. And now I've had a demo of a fertilizer store which I genuinely said at the start I didn't want. And now I've bought it. <laughs> and I'll just reinforce this point because personally it really matters to me. Farmhand have been brilliant. They give me this fertilizer store with zero strings attached. They have never told me to say anything. They have never pressured me to promote it, nothing. And I'll also say that Farmhand and Amazon have done very well out of giving me that spreader for the last six or seven months. The videos about it got really good views. They have got what they needed long before I decided to buy it or do this video. So I could genuinely say whatever I want in this video. And I'm just telling you the truth that I really genuinely did see a big saving because of the technology on that spreader. And also because I can use more straights and compounds and it's mounted to the front of the tractor. But I get that that benefit really is just to me. But I suppose I could counter that argument by saying that I was already using GPS, which had RTK. I was already doing a really good job of calibrating my fertilizer spreader. And if you're someone who doesn't have GPS to spread their fertilizer, maybe you have a fertilizer store that's spreading at 14 meters versus what you can do with this at 24 meters plus. Maybe you're not doing a good job of calibrating your fertilizer store. Like they're all benefits, which I didn't see, but you maybe would. Hopefully this video has been interesting. Hopefully, you trust me in what I'm saying, that really matters. Does it come across like I'm paranoid about that? I think it really does. I genuinely don't buy technology because a lot of the times the return on investments are just really poor. We don't use robotics, we don't use collars, we don't spend money on technology. So for me to spend money on technology, I have to be 100% certain it's going to return me a significant benefit. So I'm going to push this back into the corner of the shed and I will take it out again come February or March when we're going to sow our first cut silage. Hopefully you all enjoyed this week's video. It may have taken me not very long to film it, but I would say I have at least 10 hours into them figures. <laughs> if any of you have any questions about what I've said, want more detail or information, stick a comment down below, I will reply. It's a very tight fit. But at least this time I don't have to be so worried about scraping it. Perfect. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week.